DLP is a fully managed service designed to help discover, classify and protect sensitive information. So going over the tasks we are about to do, we are going to upload a file with sensitive data from my local machine to cloud storage. Next, we are going to create a job in the DLP console to identify the sensitive data within that file that was uploaded that resides in the bucket. DLP will then return the findings to the control so that we can take a look. So let's get started. Go over to cloud storage and then buckets, then click on create. Always remember to give your buckets a unique name. I'll name it files underscore DLP. Click on continue and select a region. In my case, I'll select US East 1. Then go on and click on create. After we've created a new bucket, it's time to upload some files here. The files I've chosen are two text files and an image file just to mix things up. One of these files contains uh, some sensitive information that is some email IDs I've randomly created for this demo. The other two files contain a picture of a panda and a list of names. The next step is to enable the DLP API. Go to the navigation bar in the search menu, write data loss prevention API, click on enable. And then move over to the DLP console. So moving right along, we have some options here that you can see. We have data profiles, inspection, risk analysis and configuration. We will go straight to inspection tab. Here we will be creating a new job. So click on create the job and job triggers. Give your job a unique ID and then select a region for it. Next we have location where we specify the location of the data that we want to inspect. And since our data is in Google Cloud Storage, I'm going to select this. Next we have location type. So where do we want to scan? And we can scan a single file or a folder path, or we can scan a whole bucket. Select the bucket we've just created. Next we have the option of sampling. Here you can reduce the percentage of included objects scanned within the bucket so you can reduce the billing. But we will be using 100% since we don't have too much data. We also have the option of start sampling from a random position but we'll start sampling from the top. You can also limit per object scan by a number of bytes. We'll keep them as default. Also specify the file type to be scanned. We will go with the default option here which is all supported file types. Under include paths, you can include a regex here and under exclude paths, you can also include a regex to skip files as well. But since we are not doing that, we can just click on continue. There is also a field available for template name if you happen to have one. In this case, we do not. So we can move down to information types. Here we can specify the type of sensitive data that we want to detect from our raw data. A few default information types are already selected, but we're only looking for email addresses. For this demo, I'll select email addresses and phone numbers to check the accuracy of the results. There are also some information types by default selected on the second page. So we'll go on and deselect them too. And then click on done. And moving further on down, we have the confidence threshold, which is a scale for likelihood. So here you can actually bring the scale down to possible or all the way up to very likely. Next up we have add action so we can now action on the job when it is completed. You can save it to BigQuery, you can publish it to Cloud PubSub. We also have the option to publish to Cloud Security Command Center and you can be notified by email on the job success or failure. So we are just going to leave all these options off and click on continue. We can specify a time span adding start time and end time or we could also create a trigger to run on a specific schedule. We can also limit the scan to new content that's been added. So if a new file has been added to cloud storage, it will start from where the last scan ended. But we're going to go ahead and just run this once. And finally, let's review the job configuration that came up. This is the JSON file that's been created with all the inputs that we've just selected. Right now, we're just going to go ahead and click on create. And also remember that it's possible for costs to grow rapidly. Now confirm create. It's now creating the job. Once it's finished creating the job, it will run it. This is going to take just about a minute or two. 
file we had nine email addresses and here we can see the nine findings of dlp we can also see the number of bytes scanned and we can see there are zero errors in result details we can see that there are nine email addresses found and zero phone numbers now that we've reached the end of the demo it's time to clean up go ahead and delete the job that you've just created and then go back to the cloud storage to delete the bucket you created for this demo i hope you found this lab useful please leave us a comment and share your experience in running this lab with us see you next time